قد أفلح المؤمنون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وسيد النبيين وخير الخلائق أجمعين أبو القاسم محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم وسهل مخرجهم وأهلك عداءهم من الأولين والآخرين يا الله ما في غيرك يا كريم يا أرحم الراحمين In this video we will examine the subject of racism in the Shia Hadith corpus and respond to the allegation that the Shia believe in racist Hadith The best way to begin is by looking at Al-Kafi Sharif where we find the following narrations. Abu Abdullah salam, has said, whoever discriminates or supports discrimination, he has taken off the color of belief from his neck. We read in another hadith, also in Al-Kafi, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, has said, whoever has prejudice or racism in his heart of the size of a mustard seed, on the Day of Judgment, Allah will raise him with the Bedouins of the time of Jahiliyyah, or pre-Islamic ignorance. In addition, we find the following narration. It's very long, but in summary, Juwaybir, a companion, is complaining to the Prophet that no woman will marry him because of his social status and his appearance. The Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, replies by saying, O Juwaybir, Allah, by means of Islam, has removed those who were called noble in pre-Islamic time of darkness and ignorance and has honored them with Islam. To those who did not have any social position before Islam, Allah has granted them honor as well as to those who were considered low in the time of ignorance. With Islam, he has removed the pride of the time of ignorance and peoples expressing pride because of tribes and strong genealogy. Today we say all people, white and black, those from Quraysh, Arab, non-Arab, are all from Adam, and Adam was created by Allah from clay. The most beloved in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will be those who are most obedient to him and most pious before him. O Juwaybir, I do not see any of the Muslims as better than you, except of his being more pious and more obedient to Allah than you. These authentic and corroborated hadiths make it apparent that not only is racism not tolerated in Shia Islam, but all forms of prejudice are forbidden and condemned severely. Islam has done away with the racism and tribalism of the age of Jahiliyyah and replaced it with a system of merit that uh, prefers the pious ones. The Quran itself confirms this in Surat Al-Hujurat, chapter 49, verse 13. يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير. O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most pious of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. If these evidences were not enough, the Imams themselves put into practice the words of the Qur'an by ignoring racism and tribalism when it came to selecting their wives. For example, the wife of Imam al-Sadiq Hamida, was a Berber, and the wife of Imam al-Rada salam Umm al-Banin Najma Khatun, was a Nubian. Also, Imam Zain al-Abidin is famously known to have had his son, Zaid bin Ali, with a woman from Sindh. Would it then make sense to say that the same Imams who are supposedly racist towards Africans and Sindhis ended up marrying them? Or that the Shia held racist beliefs about the Imams and their wives and mothers? So, if this is the case, how then do we make sense of the allegation that Al-Kafi contains racist hadiths? The following hadith is always brought up as evidence. An Abi Abdullah alayhi salam qal, qal Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, إياكم ونكاح الزنج فإنه خلق مشوه أبو عبد الله عليه السلام has said that Amir al-Mu'mineen, peace be upon him, said Be aware of marrying the people of Az-Zanj for they are a distorted creature There are other uh, similar hadiths like this one but they're weak so we won't even bother mentioning them Now, there are many ways we can approach this hadith Let's start with a chain 
it has been graded صحيح على الظاهر by المجلسي meaning that it is apparently authentic. Why did he call it apparently authentic rather than just describing it as authentic? At first glance, all of, this, uh, all of the narrators of this hadith, Ali bin Ibrahim, Harun bin Muslim, and Mas'ad bin Ziyad, they appear to be thiqa or trustworthy. However, upon further examination, we find that actually there are some problems with this chain. The first and most immediately apparent is that the second narrator, Harun bin Muslim was a companion of the 10th and 11th Imams, whereas the person he narrates from here, Masada bin Ziyad, was a companion of the 5th and 6th Imam. This would make the chain disconnected, but Majlisi does not grade the hadith as Mursal because Al Najashi mentions that Masada bin Ziyad had a book on halal al haram, from which Harun bin Muslim narrated. The soundness of the report's chain, then, would rely on whether one viewed this as an acceptable and reliable bridge to connect the narrators or not. For example, by Majlisi's standards, the hadith is apparently authentic, whereas by those of Shaykh Asif Muhsini, the hadith will be disconnected and therefore weak. It's important to note that we don't know how Mas'ada's book reached Harun bin Muslim and whether or not there were many additions or deletions in the copy he narrated from. What we find interesting, however, is that Al-Albani reports on page 159 of his second volume of Silsilat Al-Hadith Al-Daifa al mawdu'a the following narration. Choose for your sperm and marry from qualified people and beware of marrying the Zanj, for verily it is a deformed creation. Albani classified this hadith as a fabrication, but its presence in the Sunni hadith corpus indicates that it was in circulation among Sunnis at a certain point in time, and therefore, it is quite possible that it could have been also entering into circulation among Shias as well, and been added to the book of Mas'ada. Another critical point is that this exact hadith can also be found in Shaykh At-Tusi's Tahdib al-Ahkam, another of our four renowned books, and in it we read as follows. Muhammad bin Yaqub has narrated from Ali bin Ibrahim, from Harun bin Muslim, from Mas'ada bin Sadaqa, who has said that Abu Abdullah has said that Amir al Mu'minin said, Beware of marrying the Zanj, for verily it is a deformed creation. At Tusi is quoting this hadith from Muhammad bin Yaqub al Kulayni, the compiler of Al Kafi, with the same chain except there is one exception. In the place of Mas'ada bin Ziyad, it's Mas'ada bin Sadaqa. This means that there must be a scribal error in either the manuscript of Al Kafi that is available to us or in the manuscript of Al-Kafi that was available to at tusi or in the manuscript of Tahdib al-Ahkam that is available to us. Mas'ad ibn Sadaqa also replaces Ibn Ziyad in the chain of the Hadith as it appears in Al-Hurr al-Amilis wa Sa'al al-Shia. Interestingly, there is a manuscript of Al-Kafi extant today with this same detail, namely manuscript number 13 from Mar'ashi's library in Qum, number 372. All of these variants indicate that it is possible that the original chain in Al-Kafi included Mas'ad ibn Sadaqa rather than Mas'ad ibn Ziyad. This possibility is also strengthened by Mas'ad ibn Sadaqa's entry in Rijal Najashi, where we learn that he had the book of sermons of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, and this hadith about marrying the Zanj is attributed to Amir al-Mu'minin. We only know of a book of halal and haram from Mas'ad ibn Ziyad, and this hadith does not speak of a prohibition, but rather a warning of caution. To summarize, all of this makes it likely that the original Mas'ada in the chain is Ibn Sadaqa and not Ibn Ziyad, in which case the hadith will be weak due to the presence of a narrator whose reliability is unknown, that being Mas'ada ibn Sadaqa. Now let's suppose for argument's sake that the correct individual in the chain is indeed Mas'ada ibn Ziyad, and that we accept the fact that his book reached Harun bin Muslim through sound and reliable means, and that the chain of the hadith is therefore authentic. Would this prove that racism is justified from a Shia perspective and supported by our hadith? To answer this, we need to establish the context of these narrations. Firstly, who were these Zanj referred to in these hadiths? According to numerous Arabic dictionaries, such as William Lane's Lexicon Dictionary, Volume 3, page 1256, Zanj was used to refer to a particular region in Southeast Africa and its inhabitants, and not all African peoples, as some misleading polemical translator claim. 
Why then was this particular group singled out for Muslims to avoid marrying? A look at Imam Zainul Abidin's words in As Sahifa As Sajjadiyya can help clarify this and also explain what is meant by Al Khazar and other ethnic groups. We read in As Sahifa As Sajjadiyya, Dua number 27, called His Supplication for the People of the Frontiers. اللهم اخزب كل ناحية من المسلمين على من بإزائهم من المشركين وأمددهم بملائكة من عندك مردفين حتى يكشفوهم إلى منقطع التراب قتلا في أرضك وأسرا أو يقر بأنك أنت الله الذي لا إله إلا أنت وحدك لا شريك لك اللهم وعم بذلك عداءك في أقطار البلاد من الهند والروم والترك والخزار والحبش والنوبة والزنج والسقالبة والديالما وسائر أمم الشرك الذي تخفى أسماؤهم وصفاتهم وقد أحصيتهم بمعرفتك وأشرفت عليهم بقدرتك from what we read in this excerpt from the Dua, we can say that the Hadith in Al-Kafi, warning of marrying the Zanj, is not universal, nor is it based on race. Rather, what we find is that they are mentioned specifically as an idol-worshipping nation and as enemies of the Muslims. So how can we accuse this Hadith of promoting racism when it merely warns against marrying from nations who were unlawful for the Muslims to marry, precisely because they were pagans and enemies of Islam? This is particularly shown to be the case by the fact that the Imam uh, and many of them married believing Africans and Sindhis, as we have already mentioned. But still, let's suppose for argument's sake once more that all of this is not convincing and that the Hadith warning against marrying the Zanj are both authentic and referring to them as a racial category. This will be, first of all, nothing more than assumption and qiyas, and such a methodology is strongly condemned in numerous Hadith. But secondly, if the hadith were really racist, it would be necessary to reject it on the basis of contradicting both the Qur'an and the authentic established sunnah, as it would be a solitary hadith standing against a mound of authentic hadith strongly condemning all forms of racism, as well as the Qur'an itself, which states that the best among us in the eyes of Allah are the most righteous. The Imams themselves have stated in numerous authentically transmitted narrations that whatever hadith contradicts the Qur'an and established sunnah is a fabrication, as we can read in this authentic hadith in Al-Kafi. I heard Abu Abdullah salam saying, everything is referred back to the book of Allah, meaning the Qur'an and the sunnah, and every hadith that does not agree with the book of Allah is a worthless embellishment. So there we go. If we want to agree that the narration is racist, then we simply reject it because it contradicts the Qur'an and all the other authentic narrations against racism. Khalas, it's as easy as that. But after all these proofs and explanations, there will always be people who remain close-minded and will accuse us of being racist regardless. Some of the Mukhalifin like to always mention some traditions in our books in which there are seemingly unpleasant references to the Zanj or other people and use it in one way or another to show that Shi'ism legitimizes or promotes racism especially towards black-skinned individuals. What they often fail to show, however, is that their own literature, hadith, as well as opinion of scholars, is filled with similar, if not worse, remarks regarding black people. We'll present but a small glimpse of the iceberg. The irony of all ironies is that the same hadith is narrated by Aisha. We read in Ahkam al-Qur'an, volume 3, pages 165 and 166, and in Sunan al daraqutni volume 4, page 457, with a Hassan chain. From Aisha who said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his family, said, Marry those who are compatible, marry them and choose them for your children, and beware of marrying the Zanj, for verily it is a deformed creation. Not only that, but the Sunni narrations, as well as their jurists and scholars, have been very explicit regarding the superiority of the Arab race. Let us look at the hadith, then we will see how it was understood and used in issuing fatwas. In Sahih Muslim, we read, I heard Allah's Messenger as saying, 
Verily, Allah granted eminence to Kinana from amongst the descendants of Ismail, and he granted eminence to Quraysh amongst Kinana, and he granted eminence to Banu Hashem amongst the Quraysh, and he granted me eminence from the tribe of Banu Hashem. What have the Sunnah scholars said about this? Let us see. Ibn Taymiyyah says in his Iqtida Sirat al-Mustaqim, volume 1, page 419 and 420, Indeed, it is the belief of the Ahlus Sunnah wa Jama'ah that the Arab race is superior to the race of non-Arabs, the Hebrews, the Syrians, the Romans, the Persians, and others. And indeed, the Quraysh is the most superior among the Arabs, and indeed, the Banu Hashem is the most superior among the Quraysh, and indeed, the Prophet, may the blessings and peace of Allah be upon him, is the most superior of the Banu Hashem, for he is the most superior of all creation by his own self, and also the most superior among them because of his lineage or ancestry. What about when it comes to fatwas? Is it allowed for an Arab to marry non-Arab? Ibn Qudama, the Hanbali scholar, said in Al-Umda fil Fiqh, page 90, The guardian of the woman cannot marry her to someone who is not a suitable match for her, and Arabs are suitable matches for each other, and a male slave is not a suitable match for a free woman, nor is an evildoer a suitable match for a virtuous woman. Ibn Qudama says in another book of his, Al-Mughni, volume 7, page 375, and Abu, Qiyad, uh, sorry, Abu Hanifa said, A non-Arab is not suitable in marriage for an Arab, nor is a non-Qurayshi Arab suitable for a Qurayshi. And finally, we also have Al-Albani who is reported to have said in his first volume of Silsilat Al-Hadith al daifa page 303. Therefore, it is established that Islam is given glory and is humiliated by the glory of its people and their humiliation, and this is regardless of whether they are Arabs or non-Arabs, since there is no superiority of an Arab over a non-Arab except by piety. So, O oh Allah, give glory to the Muslims and inspire them to return to your book and the son of your Prophet until you give glory through them to Islam. However, that does not negate the Arab race being superior than the race of the rest of all other nations. Rather, this is what I believe in, even though I am Albanian. But indeed, I am Muslim. Alhamdulillah, this is because what I mentioned of the preference of the race of the Arab over others is that which Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah are agreed upon. Many other scholars have said similar things, like Al Nawawi, but I won't mention them here just for the sake of brevity. But if you think we were done, think again. Here is more. Imam al-Busayri reports in Ithaf al-Khirat al-Mehra, volume 5, page 272, with a reliable chain of transmission. Al-Humaydi said, Mahdi ibn Maymun informed us on the authority of Wasil, on the authority of Hilal ibn Abi Sinan, from a slave of the Banu Hashim tribe, he said, We learned that the Messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Among the worst of your servants are the black Sudanese. When they are hungry, they steal, and, then, and when they are satiated, they commit adultery. In Jami' Ahkam al-Qur'an by Al-Qurtubi, volume 7, page 148. What is reported from Tawus, may God have mercy on him, is that he did not attend marriages between black and white people, or between white and black people, saying that this stems from the word of God, they changed the creation of Allah. And finally, in Musannaf by Abdul Razak, volume 4, page 485. Abdul Razak, on the authority of Muammar from Ibn Tawus, from his father, he reported that he did not eat meat sacrificed by a black person. I then asked Ibn Tawus, why? He replied, my father used to say, have you ever seen anything good in a black person? Obviously, I didn't present all of these narrations to offend anyone, and I know the vast majority of Sunnis condemn racism as well. This was only to show that if the Mukhalifin want to accuse us, the Shia, of being racist or containing racism in our literature, they should start by opening their own books. This is a clear example of don't throw stones at us when your own house is made of glass. And I'm being extremely generous here as we have proven that our books are not racist to begin with. So they have two options. Either they can admit our books are not racist, apologize and move on, or either they can continue believing that our books are racist, and in doing so, they also acknowledge that their own books are equally racist, and much worse. In conclusion, the Qur'an, as well as numerous authentic narrations in Al-Kafi, strongly condemn racism and tribal prejudice. The Imam themselves were born of and married women of various origins, not only Arabs. 
the hadiths that are alleged to be racist in Al-Kafi are not only weak, but cannot be used as proof for racism because they are simply referring to nations of polytheists and enemies of Islam rather than discriminating them due to the color of their skin. This is the correct manner of understanding hadith as opposed to cherry-picking and mistranslating individual narrations to push a misleading narrative. And with this, we end the video. I hope this dumb polemic has finally been cleared once and for all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill love in us for all of our beloved Muslim brothers and sisters, regardless of their skin color or ethnicity, and we disassociate from anyone whose heart is filled with racism. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa